Good evening, Jamestown. I'm Matthew Neese with your Tuesday, April 19th, 2011 JCTV News Update. Flooding from the Cheyenne River has overwhelmed several areas in Barnes County and led to the loss of several homes. These developments are in spite of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers cutting back releases from the Bald Hill Dam north of Valley City yesterday. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers spokesman Shannon Bauer says the Corps lowered releases from Bald Hill Dam from 7,000 cubic feet per second to 6,500 feet cubic feet per second. However, officials say the river might break the 2009 record later this week, depending on how fast moisture from the recent snowfall gets to the Cheyenne River. Meanwhile, more than 60 homes in Valley City and elsewhere in Barnes County have been evacuated primarily because of access issues due to levee construction and blocked or washed out roads. In rural Barnes County, more than seven homes are already underwater and eight more are surrounded by water. While they may not be experiencing flooding, but there is definitely turmoil in one of the Arab world's most repressive countries, Syria. Today, the Syrian government attempted to placate protesters there with declarations of reform, but also warned its people to end the demonstrations. This confusing mix of proclamations came hours after the authoritarian state sent in armed forces to disperse a gathering in Horn, Syria, Syria's third largest city. At least two protesters died from the government assault. Meanwhile, protesters are waiting to see if the government will make good on its promise to repeal an emergency law that's been in place for almost 50 years. So far, Syria's interior ministry has legalized peaceful protests, but warned it would bring the full breadth of the law against any other kinds of protests. Well, it's not just the weather or foreign governments, Stocks have been in full-blown roller coaster mode lately as well. Yesterday, the ratings firm Standard & Poor's assigned a negative future outlook for the United States debt. Although the agency did not lower its highest AAA rating on the country's debt, it is the first time America was given an outlook other than stable since Standard & Poor's started assigning outlooks 12 years ago. Meanwhile, markets turned sharply lower in reaction to the news, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average having its biggest decline for over a month. The S&P 500 stock index and NASDAQ also had heavy losses. Yet gold prices soared to an all-time record of $1,500 an ounce. Turning to your weather, accumulations from today's snow are projected to be around 2 to 4 inches. But we might be able to add to that tomorrow as there is a 20% chance of precipitation for our Wednesday. Tomorrow's high should be in the upper 30s with winds from the southwest around 10 miles per hour and lows in the mid-20s. For both Thursday and Friday, there is a chance we'll get some snow or rain with highs on both days in the low 40s and lows in the low 30s. But hey, look at the weekend, partly to mostly sunny skies throughout Saturday and Sunday, with highs ranging from the low to upper 50s and lows in the 30s. Perhaps the sun will dry things out a little bit. In sports this weekend, the Jimmy softball team will play four games against the Beavers of Minot State University. Games start at 1 o'clock on both Friday and Saturday afternoon, and all games will be here at home. The Jimmy baseball team plays the Vikings of Valley City State University. On Friday, the Jimmys and Vikings play a doubleheader here in Jamestown. And then on Saturday, the two teams will head to Valley City to play a doubleheader there. That is, if the games aren't rained or snowed out. Make sure to keep an eye on both the baseball and softball schedules. And of course, we'll let you know of any cancellations or postponements right here at JCTV. Today's history headline, courtesy history.com, is the 104th anniversary of one of perhaps America's most prestigious marathons. On April 19, 1897, the first Boston Marathon took place, thanks in large part to the efforts of then Olympic U United States Olympic team manager John Graham. The inaugural marathon was won by John J. McDermott of New York City with a time of just over 2 hours and 55 minutes. But that was a different headline from a different day. For tomorrow's headlines, tune into JCTV, where we passionately try to connect the campus with the community. In Jamestown, I'm Matthew Neese. Nice.